Hallelujah. I might live beside you too. Then what are you going to do? You think I'm bad here? Where do you get there? And don't forget that <laughs> we're having that ladies, that ladies tea is coming March 11th, which is a Saturday at, at 10 a.m. in the cafe. Bring a favorite teacup. Come out March 18th. Yoking for Jesus. Ladies get together and do a stretching exercises. And Elizabeth Jones is one you want to see about that. It's always the first and third Saturday. And then they have a thing coming up March 19th. Woody Woodson is coming. And Easter candy, you saw that thing out there? Bring some Easter candy, get those larger ones, uh, eggs so we can, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to pass that around. That's a good idea, yeah. You see, I don't know what to buy. Make sure it's individually wrapped, that's all. And sign that. And, and you say, oh, I can't do that. Well, sure you can. Yeah, I did it. If I can do it, you can do it, I tell you that. And uh, we have communion. Make sure you got a cup. And this week, tomorrow, is March Sargo's birthday. So you see Marge, you want to wish her a happy birthday. So that is really good. She's, she's, that's good. And we're blessed. And uh, we have something. Um, sometimes uh, when we have uh, things that happen, especially things that are unplanned and we're not always ready for those things. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a time right now for our pastors, both of them, and we're going to give it to them now. So, Pastor, may we give us to you and to Lindell. And uh, they did not know this. How many know we're still friends? I knew you were up to something. I was. <laughs> well, this was, this was more. But do you want to open it right now, Pastor, so you see what it is? It's mine. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think. I don't know which is which. Do we have to share? No. Oh. No, you don't have to share. Ready for winter. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Thank you. It was Pastor Matt's idea, that was not my idea. It was Matt that did that, so not I, sir. Hey, I want to tell you, this guy's been with us for 42 years, too, from the very beginning. And he has done a great job, hasn't he? With the high, he is a high-tech, spiritual guy. Come on, let's thank God for Matt, too. A lot of the designs that you see around here, he has been behind all that. He went to a conference, and they had these posters up about the worship and he really liked them and he could see them in our church so after after the conference he says what are you going to do with all those they says we're going to get rid of them right he says can i have them <laughs> so they're recycled we don't care they're beautiful but that's just a sample of his heart for the ministry and when uh, pastor said he was with us from the beginning. Whether he wanted to be with us, he was with us. He was just a little guy. And he was in um, nursery with Jesse Schaefer's children. And that is more than 42 years. Isn't it? We were, but anyhow, we have a long history of people that have come and gone. But guess what? God's the same. So we don't have to change just because people do. Say, if you were in the fire hall uh, back, that was what, 1981, 82, just stand to your feet if you were there. I, I know Jesse Schaefer was, Pastor Gail was, uh, Patty Reynolds, where's Patty? Kathy was there. There she is. Judy was there back in the fire hall. There's Patty, Patty, there's Patty right there, all over there at the very beginning when we started. There was fire in the fire hall. Holy Ghost fire in the fire hall. Come on, let's thank God for these people. Amen. Okay. I'm not done. <laughs> you know how children are? We used to meet in the fire hall, and of course, we had the children up in the front row. 
And one Sunday we heard pop, 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 pop. Where our, our children found out if you put a straight pin through the center of caps and pull it out, it would go pop, 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 pop. So we're used to a lot of noise. So if your children make noise, don't worry about it. Let's make some noise for Jesus today. Let's shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Come on, let's stand and worship Him. Amen. Good to see you all this morning. If you can't stick around, we're going to have some cake and pizza after service just to celebrate. Make sure you congratulate my parents for their faithfulness. Not very many pastors stay in one place or a pastor this long. So it's a very unique situation. So let's, let's appreciate them and appreciate what the Lord is has done and is still doing and is going to do. Amen. So God, we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, Lord. We pray for this nation. We pray for this this uh, pockets of stirring and the hearts of young people, Lord. And we just want to not only pray for them and pray for protection over them, but we want to join them in hungering and thirsting after you, Lord. So Lord, pour out your spirit in us. Pour out more of you in us, Lord. Help us to be your mouthpiece. Help us to love and see people the way you see them. And do what you call us to do in this last, last days. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. 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 Amen.
We just give God all the glory for what he's done down through the years. We thank God for each one of you and your faithfulness. You've been such a blessing. What has been built here has been the Lord working through people, faithful people. And you are those faithful people. you kind of the scaffolding that has built whatever has been built. And God has used you. And he gives all the glory, doesn't he? Amen. You know, I just like right now. Take a minute. Let's pray for 
Pastor Matt and Maria. And I'd like to have uh, Brother Gail and Bob come on up here. And Saya, you come over too. And Dave, if you're available. And Elizabeth and Dave, just get around them. Getting back up in there. We got room for Reggie and Lee Ann and Marge Sargo and Nancy and Fred, if you can get up there, and James Copper. We're just going to pray for them because, you know, <laughs> Pastor Matt is always pouring out. And he never gets to sit there and receive. So right now, we're just going to pray over them. They're, by the way, they're going on vacation. They're going to be gone the next three services. So we're going to pray over them right now. And uh, we're going to believe God and stand in faith with him. All right. Thank you, Lord. Come on up, dear. That a girl. That a girl. You're doing good. See if you can get your hands on or hands on somebody there. And Brother Gail, where are you? How about praying for you? Father, we're so very thankful for Pastor Matt and Maria. Lord, thank you, Lord, that uh, we ask you to bless them, keep them. Let your face shine upon them and be gracious to them, Father. Lift up your countenance upon them, Father, and give them peace. Bless them coming in and bless them going out that they are the head and not the tail, they're above and not beneath, and everything they set their hand to will prosper. We thank you there is no weapon formed against them, tongues that would rise against me found them in the wrong. Bless them and their children, and father, and their grandchildren, and their children's children as we sing. Thank you for what they do in this church, Father. Thank you for Maria supports him. Thank you, Father, for, thank you for Matt. Thank you, Father, for blessing him, and touching everything they go about. Bless them as they go on that vacation. Good time, good time to smile and laugh and have a good time. And we're just so thankful for them. Thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for them. Amen. Bon voyage. Have a great trip. Glory to God. And see, check to see these. Some of these ladies need, need help going down those stairs here. Thank you, folks. Glory to God. Thank you for your part in what God's done here to transform lives. Many lives have been changed. Let's rejoice and worship Him some more. Amen.
Let's just worship him now. Come on, let's give him glory. The Bible says, I will sing with the Spirit, I will sing with the understanding also. Just go, let your voice be raised up to Him and glorify Him today. Those of you who'd like to just come to the altar right now and just gather around the altar and worship, that's fine. You just worship from your seat wherever you like it. There's a special presence of God here today. I sense that, don't you? How many sense that today? God's moving. And so now's your time to receive from Him. And it just takes acting in faith. You know, if I, if I say yet, yeah, you know, if the, if the Lord speaks to me and says, now you come to this altar, and have them lay hands on you, and, and uh, if you do, you're going to receive something. So if I sit here like this, I say, well, what do people think of me if I go up there? Gee, they might think I sin, or they might think I'm trying to puff myself up or uh, show off or something. No, 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 that's all false. Don't pay any attention to what people think. Hey, Amen. Let's just be... God pleasers. Let's be God conscious, not people conscious. Amen. So let's just worship Him today. Come on, let's glorify Him.
communion elements there. You can take communion right here at the altar. Just stay right there at the altar if you like. Somebody bring your communion elements. Ushers, maybe you can pass them out up there. That's a good place right there to take communion. I used to do that back in the Methodist church, take communion at the altar. You can do it here too. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you. We've come to meet with you. You know, the Bible says back there in Exodus 25. You can sit down or stand, whatever you want to do. Exodus 25, and beginning with Exodus 25, beginning with verse. Five twenty-one, beginning with verse. Oops, I got Genesis. Excuse me, Exodus twenty-five, and verse twenty-one. It says, "And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and the ark in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there, there where, there where the ark is, there where the mercy seat is." There will I meet with you. God's going to meet them at the mercy seat. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. God says, I'm going to meet you at the mercy seat. Where his blood was applied. Where the blood back in the Old Testament was blood of animals. But now when we look into the New Testament, Romans chapter 3... Remember, God says, I'll meet you. How many want to have an encounter with God? How many want to meet Him? <laughs> Amen. You can have an encounter with God. In Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, beginning with verse 25. It says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Talking about Jesus. Set him forth to be a propitiation. What's a propitiation? One of the definitions for propitiation is a mercy seat. God is, Jesus is, the mercy seat. So where did he say he's going to meet you? At the mercy seat. So Jesus is a propitiation or the mercy seat through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. It's for through faith in that blood that he becomes a mercy seat. Aren't you glad we can have an encounter with God? David had encounters with God, didn't he? Climbed up on a hill side and play his heart to, to God and have an encounter with him just adoring him and expressing his praise and adoration to him and what did it do for David he became a great king didn't he how about Moses Moses had an encounter with God at the burning bush where he had to take his shoes off he was on holy ground he had an encounter with God and what did it do brought him to a leadership position to deliver his people from 400 years of bondage and slavery and gave him the Ten Commandments. How about Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6? They put those coals of fire on his tongue. He had an encounter with God. He was in the glory, saw the glory of Almighty God. He had an encounter. Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. What was that? A blinding light came. He fell off of his horse. And God spoke to him. He had an encounter with Jesus. Went on into Damascus. Was later filled with the Holy Spirit. And went right out and began to preach the word of God. Because he had a destiny. And it started with an encounter with God. Moses started with an encounter with God. And you know, God looks at you through the eyes of destiny. Do you know that? Just like he did with Paul. He saw him as a great leader. He saw Peter 
even though he had denied Jesus three times, he saw Peter through the eyes of destiny. He was going to be the rock of the church. And he was going to preach a message on the day of Pentecost. And 3,000 people got born again. He sees you through the eye of destiny too. He sees you as winning people to Jesus. He sees you as being part of this end time harvest. He sees you as going on to work for God and doing something great and mighty. He sees you as a child of Almighty God, washed in the blood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He sees you through the eye of destiny. What is the destiny that he's called you to? Well, it begins right here at communion where we get forgiveness of sins. Whatever is bondage in your life, whatever addiction, whatever it might be that's sin in your life, this is where to unload it right here. This is where to get forgiveness. Do you know it says over there in Colossians chapter 1? Oh, I sense his presence today. How about you? Colossians 1, he says in verse 21, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. The word reconciled means restored to favor. You've been restored to favor with Almighty God because of the blood. And it goes on to say, In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. There's nowhere on earth that you can get to that place but through the blood of Jesus. To be holy, unblameable, no blame. Nobody can chide you for anything. Unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Only the blood of Jesus is do that for you. You say, but don't you remember what you did 20 years ago? No. God doesn't remember it. It's as far as the east is from the west. He's forgotten it. Your past is past at last. Hallelujah. Stop driving down the road of life looking in the rearview mirror. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.22 in the t t uh, today's Living Bible says, And now Christ has brought you into the very presence of God, and you are standing there before him with nothing left against you. Nothing left against you. Nothing left he could chide you for. The King James Version says to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. So today, as we partake of communion, just lift the top part of that. Because here's your opportunity to receive healing. You know, many people have been healed taking communion. Do you know that? I said people have been healed taking communion. Do you need healing today? This is a way to appropriate it through healing, or through uh, communion. The meal that heals, some call it. The bread represents his broken body. Whatever ailment, infirmity, disease, sickness, Malady, whatever it might be in your body today, you can be rid of it as you take communion. By his stripes, it says in 1 Peter 2, 24, he has borne our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins may live unto righteousness. By whose stripes we were healed. Stripes on his body, 59 of them. 39, excuse me, 39. So let's partake of this bread right now and receive your healing. Fa Heavenly Father, thank you for these elements. Sanctify them now, we pray. As we honor you and as this is a memorial to what you have done at Calvary's cross, we receive it all right now in Jesus' name. Partake of that bread right now. Father, we thank you that your healing anointing is coursing through our being right now to kill every abnormal cell, every bit of inflammation, every bit of arthritis, leukemia, Anything that is, if the blood is out of order, we thank you that it's coming into line right now. As it says in Ezekiel, blood live, blood live in Jesus' name. Thank you for a balanced blood. Thank you for it, Father.
Jesus' name. Thank you. We're going to live long, live strong, and live healthy because of you. Yes, Father. You said with long life, you'd satisfy us in the length of our days you would fulfill. Thank you, Father. And, Father, thank you for the cup representing the blood of the new covenant shed for us and for many for the remission of sins. He said, take, drink ye all of it, remembering that Christ died for you. So, Father, we partake of this cup right now, and we receive forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Father, we don't want to take this unworthily, so we examine ourselves. We judge ourselves right now that we would not be judged. Father, you said for this reason, many sleep and die young. So we're going to not take it unworthily today, Father. And we put our sins before you and we say thank you, Father, that there is cleansing now by your precious blood. We receive it now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We have no ought, unforgiveness, bitterness against anyone, anywhere, anytime. We re right now, as an act of faith, we release those people who have hurt us or harmed us in Jesus' name. We do it by faith in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are our propitiation. You are our mercy seat. We have this encounter with you today, Lord. We meet you at the mercy seat where Jesus' blood was applied in the heavenly mercy seat. Thank you for it, Father. Everybody say, I'm free. The Bible said is in Galatians 5, 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. That's one of the great things about Jesus. When you come to him, you get born again, there's a freedom. There's a freedom that comes to you. Freedom from sin, freedom from sickness, disease, freedom from lack, freedom from mental disorders. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Everybody say, thank God I'm free. The Son has set me free. You know where it says over there, I think it's Malachi, the Son of Righteousness has risen with healing in his wings. Remember that scripture? The word wings there means the bottom of the tapestry, the hem of, the, of a tapestry, of, of, of a coat or a, a suit, the hem, very bottom of it, where they sewed the hem on it. And so what did Jesus do? Well, what did the woman with the issue of blood do? In Mark chapter 5, she came to Jesus, and she touched what? The wings. She touched the hem of his garment, and he, she was made whole. And so Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Why? Because the Son of Righteousness has risen with healing in His wings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we, as New Testament believers, can touch the hem of His garment anytime. Anytime we begin to praise Him. Anytime we begin to thank Him. Glory be to God. Come on, let's praise Him a little bit more. Well, I'll tell you what we better do. <laughs> we, better, we better go ahead and take the offering this morning because our people have to count it back there, and we don't want them to be here at 2 o'clock. All right. So today, ushers, could you help me with this? We want to pass out some good literature to you, some good information. Ushers, if you would, in our Take Back America campaign, we like to keep you informed of what's going on. So ushers, if you could help us pass these out. Because there are a lot of things, crazy things going on. Don't read them now. Read it later, please. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you realize that uh, parents across the country are becoming increasingly concerned about the public schools because they're overtly indoctrinating children about transgender identity, and, and they're bragging about it. One Maryland teacher posted on TikTok video in which said, I just got fired for indoctrinating my students. Then according to Fox News, she was, she said she was only kidding, still employed. She said while dancing, put your taxes in the bag for my salary. Another teacher in Texas boasted in a video about indoctrinating students in gender fluidity, gender dysphoria. 
A teacher in New Jersey also responded to critics who accused her of grooming students into accepting transgender ideology. She mocked critics for posting TikTok videos of her doing exactly that. An Illinois teacher bragged about her woke propagandizing of kids. I am in fact indoctrinating your children, said Heather Marie Godbout. I'm indoctrinating them. You're 100% right. So they're doing it and they're bragging about it. So this is why we need to speak out and let people know where we stand. In fact, one teacher named Jessica Topia out in California, she says, we're not going to be secretive about these kids who want to want to change their identity and keep it from their parents. No, we're going. I'm going to let the parents know. And she told the parents about it, and she got fired for it. In Canada, one pastor was arrested because he spoke out against a drag queen reading to children in a library, and they threw him out of there. And and uh, later on, the police came to his house and arrested him because because he disturbed the peace. Well, anyhow, lots of crazy stuff going on. But let's go ahead and center our giving on, on this morning and put that picture up if you would please of that uh, Jewish lady living over I think over in Russia right now but this is a, a, an elderly gal Jewish gal and you know that the, the Jewish people were scattered weren't they all over the face of the earth and now they're coming back they're coming back to Israel now and that is called Aliyah 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 I think it is. But it's the return. Did I say that right, Linda? Aliel, something like that. Yeah. The, the, all through Jeremiah and Isaiah, it's prophesied that these Jewish people are going to come back to Israel. But there's a lot of impoverished people like her living throughout the world and uh, in Ukraine and Russia and different places. Well, this group called the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews reaches out and, and blesses them and helps them financially and gives them food and so forth. So we're going to take an offer offering today, and I want you to just put uh, on your envelope that portion that you'd like to sow to the Jews, just put down Jews. And we'll see it gets to the International Fellowship of Christian and Jews. Christians and Jews. I mean, God says in Genesis 12, 3, when you bless my people, you'll be blessed. If you curse my people, you'll be cursed. So it's time to do something for the Jewish people and bless them, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's do it today. So just on your envelope, just mark Jews and, and let's sow into that. And uh, here's a good scripture for you. Philippians 4.19 in the Amplified AMPC version. It says, and God will liberally fill, liberally supply rather, fill to the full every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's predicated on our giving, isn't it? He'll supply our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So let's go ahead and give this morning. And that portion that you want to sow, just mark Jews on your envelope there. And you see our, you can take a look on your announcement sheet and see our calendar or our thermometer there as far as our construction projects gonna, is concerned out there at the pavilion and see where we, where we are with that. So glory to God. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's pray this morning. All right. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. If the Lord leads you, please lift your offerings up and, and wave them to the Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you, Lord God. You bless these tithes and offerings, Father. We give it with an open hand and a glad heart. And we praise you with it, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord God, in Acts 10. It'll come up as a memorial to you, Heavenly Father, that we give with a glad heart and an open hand. If you say amen to that, say amen. Amen.
promised ground. Remember when he went, it says he pitched his tent towards Sodom. He pitched his tent toward a mind-altering culture. And you see what it did to him. Today, we are in a mind-altering culture. And it's leading people to their demise. It is through deception, isn't it? But this society, this culture, tries to change your thinking. To bring it into degradation and, and into negativity and to sin and all sorts of things. But those who are being deceived by this culture don't need to be. You and I have the answer. It's in the Word of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, If you have a love for the Word of God, you will not be deceived. You got to have a love for the word. Amen. Yeah. Letting it work in you and live in you in abundance. He said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you, and you will not be subject to this mind altering culture that we live in. Amen. The only way is filling your heart with God alone, filling your heart with the word of God. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Young people today, all over this nation, are in despair, deep darkness, suicidal thoughts, all kind of crazy stuff. But the tide is turning, and it's turning because places like Asbury allowed a sweeping move of God where children, young people came together, and they were desperate, they were hungry. They wanted more of God. And they began to reverence and revere Him and, and begin to humble themselves and begin to worship and praise and prayer, spontaneous prayer breaks out all over the place. And a sweeping revival took place. Over 70,000 people came to Asbury. They showed pictures of people sitting on the lawn out in front of the chapel. 1,500 people could get into the chapel. Finally, the, the officials in the town of Wilmore said, hey, we, we don't have any more parking spaces in this town. They're all gone. 70,000 people in a little town called Wilmore. And so they, they, had to do some, they had to do some things. They had to change. But it has spread to Lee University. In Cleveland, Tennessee, it has spread, spread to Samford University in Homewood, uh, Alabama and the pastor there no the president of that college said this is a, this is a, 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 an organic spontaneous move of God in our university and there are about 20 other colleges the same thing has happened church something has begun I just talked to my friend a retired pastor and he said he's watching on internet and he says revival is breaking loose everywhere Glory to God. Show that picture back there of, that, uh, uh, of the upper room in Israel, if you would, please. My wife was watching online, and she said she found, she saw, there it is, spontaneous prayer broke out in the actual upper room.
power of God. Everybody say God's on the move. Hallelujah. Now this is a joke. One pastor took his wife to the doctor. And the doctor said, what seems to be the problem? He says, well, well it's my, my wife. It's her, it's her snoring. The doctor says, well, does it bother you? He says, it bothers my whole congregation. <laughs> I say, that's an indictment against his preaching, right? <laughs> and that's not this pastor and his wife. That, that, what, don't, don't mix that up now. That's, we had nothing to do with that. All right. Everybody say, God's on the move. What's he want to do? Look at Psalm 71. I heard the pizza is here, but I'm going to give God first place. Is that all right with you? I can eat cold pizza if I need to. Psalm 71, 17, it says, Psalm 71, 17, it says, O God, Thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared Thy wondrous works. Are you declaring God's wondrous works in your life? Have you, are you sharing your te testimony? Generation. This generation. They're coming out of it. They're morning so what do we need to do we need to enter in we need to humble ourselves like Hezekiah did like Naaman and had to humble him quickly here.
impotent in his feet. to act on our faith. This morning. We're going to worship God with one last song. I just wanted to say that. Um, I'm going to get this mic here. I just wanted to say that God wants you to know um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to get close to Him. to get close to him. He's so loving and gentle oh, and yes. accepting. You're his child. He sees no flaw in you. Don't be afraid. Come to him. Be close to him. He's your answer. Thank Don't you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Particularly since we took communion. The Bible says, sanctify yourselves because on the morrow, God will do wonders among you. In other words, consecrate yourself because consecration will bring a manifestation. Consecration will be an operate, will bring a demonstration. You just consecrated yourself with communion and so get ready, because God wants to move. He wants to do miracles. But it's going to take us acting, not just sitting and, well, I wonder what people think of me if I, if I get up and dance, or if I begin to worship God freely, or if I come to this altar, come up the altar area. What will people, stop thinking about, about that. Stop being people conscious, be God conscious. Let's worship Him as we go and follow the Holy Spirit and come up to the altar. Come up and worship whatever you feel to do. Let's do it this morning.